In this program, we're going to learn how to use Tracker. Tracker is a video analysis software program that allows you to look at video and analyze the motion within it. In this program, we're going to look at opening Tracker, importing video, fitting the video to the window, selecting frames of interest, collecting the data, saving the file, um, giving the computer information for the axis and scale, and then copying the data onto graphical analysis. Starting with opening tracker, I go to my program file folder. For me, I have to also go into the science folder, and then tracker is listed under T for tracker. Double click on that. It opens. I maximize the window. Now I want to import a video. So I go to video, get the click, click the drop down menu, hit import. Tracker has two desktops, which is a little unusual. So if I click this and get the drop down menu and I pull up, I can see there's another desktop. I'm going to go to the movie file worldfamouswonderdog.mov. You can open it with either Zoogle or QuickTime. I'm just going to use the default. It takes a moment to open and there it is. I could see from these bars here there's more to the picture than what's showing. So I want the whole video to fit in this window. To do that I take the cursor and move it anywhere in the picture frame. Right click Go to Zoom and hit To Fit. Now I'm seeing the whole picture. So I've opened Tracker, I've imported the video, and I've fit to Window. Next I want to select the frames of interest. Well, what am I interested in this video? What do I want to track? What motion do I want to follow? To do that I want to know what the video has in it. So I'm going to run the video down here. There's Ellie the Wonder Dog. She leaps up in the air. She hits the volleyball, the volleyball comes back down, and she chases it. So there's two sets of motion, Ellie the Wonder Dog and the volleyball. In this video, I'm going to follow the volleyball's motion. So I only want to have the parts of the video that have the volleyball in it. And in particular, I want to follow the volleyball after Ellie hits it and it comes back down. So I want to follow the volleyball after it leaves Ellie's paws. So I want to select that as my frames of interest. I reset the video. I play it again. Volleyball comes in. I stop the video. I want to see it right as the volleyball leaves her paws. To get a better picture, I'm going to zoom in. I enlarge the picture. And now I'm going to step the frames one at a time. Volleyball comes in, she grabs it, she's pushing it away, but her paws look like they're still on the ball. So I'm going to do a couple of more frames. Her paws are now definitely off the ball. Maybe one more frame just to be sure. Definitely off. So this is where I want to start keeping track of the volleyball. So I'm going to grab this triangle over here on the left hand side and move it to where the video clip is at right now. And that's now my start for the video. Now I want to find the right place to end the video. So I'm going to go back and zoom to fit so I can follow the volleyball and start it playing again. Goes up, comes back down. Right now it's blocking Ellie. I think I want to catch it before it gets that far low. So I'm going to use the step keys and frame it over. So that looks like a good pl place to stop. I'm going to grab this triangle here on the right hand side and move it over to this stop point. Okay. Now I've selected my frames of interest. Let's make sure I got what I wanted. Go over here, reset the video, play it again, and sure enough it just has the volleyball going up and coming back down. I'm going to reset it again. So I've opened Tracker, I've imported a video, I fit to window, and I selected my frames of interest. Now I just have to collect the data. To do that I'm going to track where the volleyball is at. I'm going to make tracks. So I go up here to where it says tracks, click on that. It's a new 
point mass. Click on that. And I get mass A. I can change the properties of mass A if I want to by clicking right here. If I make tracks and they get messed up and I want to clear them, I can clear them. If I want to, I can actually delete them entirely, which sometimes that's the best route if you've messed things up. After I delete it, I can just make a new point mass. Now I just need to track it after having created it. I'm going to zoom again so it gets a little better view. What do I want to track about the volleyball? Do I want to go to the middle of the volleyball? Eh, it's kind of hard to always make sure you're at the middle. What about the label? Well, the label would be a good thing to track, but I know the volleyball rotates. What about the top? Well, that would be great, but I happen to know the volleyball top goes off screen for a moment. So I'm going to go with the bottom of the volleyball. I'm going to track the bottom. So I can consistently find that bottom edge. Now I just have to actually make tracks. To do that, I hold down the shift key. When I hold down the shift key, the cursor changes into a box. I have to keep holding down the shift key. Then I move this cursor to exactly the point I want to track, and I hint either enter or I left click on it. And then the frame automatically advances to the next one. Hit the shift key again, move the cursor to where I want it at, click it, and I've made two tracks. One more. Okay, we can see the frame keeps advancing. These little tracks let me know points that I marked on those particular frames. This was the zero frame, the origin, the first one after that, the second one, and so on. They confuse me. I don't like to see them around while I'm making tracks, so I can make them disappear. This button up here hides the numbers. This button up here actually hides the tracks. If I click on it, I get a drop-down menu. I can have no trails or no tracks, short trails or short tracks, longer ones or see all of them. I'm going to choose to have no trails while I'm making it. Now I'm going to collect all the rest of my data. Okay, I've collected all my data. I know I'm at the end frame now. I want to see all the trails that I collected. I want to see if they look good. I'm going to reset the video. I'm going to go ahead and let's just do a short trail. And I'm going to play it. And we can see those tracks seem to follow the ball pretty nicely so I'm okay with it. If I want to see all of the tracks, I go on up and put all steps, and they all show up. I'm going to go ahead and reset the video. I really just want to see a short trail right now. I want to see the origin. So I've opened Tracker, I've imported a video, I've fit to window, I selected my frames of interest, and I've actually collected all the data. Now I want to save the Tracker file. If I'm not careful and I don't save it right now, chances are the system will mess up and I'll lose all the information I've collected. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to save it. It's a good idea to call it by the lab name. So this is Lab 1-1. It's a good idea to give the date. Today is July 9th, 2012. And save. You're going to save it not to your desktop, but to your Z drive. It's also a good idea to save the video to your Z drive, too. The tracker file needs the video to open up. We've saved the tracker file. The next thing is we have to give the computer information. We have to tell the computer where we want the, it to start tracking, what the origin is, as well as a distance, what length something is. We have to give it a calibration. The origin is easy. It's nice to start with the first dot. So I go over here, I click on the purple axes. Now there's two places I can grab the axes. I can grab it over here on the X axes. You accidentally rotate it, and some people actually rotate it to the point where they're really not sure anymore what's what. Then you can just go right up here to where it says axes, and go from the horizontal and change that to zero, and it'll write itself. 
The other place to grab onto the axes is at the origin itself. So I'm going to move my cursor right to the origin. I get the little hand right there. Click onto it and I'm going to move that origin to my first track. So they're perfectly lined up. Okay, so now my first track is right at the origin. Alright, I've told the computer what my origin is, what I want it measuring from. Now I have to give it a reference distance or calibrate the computer. I need something that's in the same plane as the volleyball. I can't pick the tree way back here because due to perspective that's not the same distance it would be if it was in the same plane as the volleyball. I could use Ellie, but I happen to know the volleyball is a 10 inch volleyball, so I'm going to use the volleyball. I'm going to get rid of the axes because it's just cluttering up the picture. I'm going to click on my calibration tool. It looks like a tape measure. There's a drop down. The easiest one to use is a calibration stick, so I'm going to click on that. When I click on calibration stick, it pops up in the very middle of the picture. I'm going to grab onto that center and move it over by the volleyball. Once I get it in the volleyball area, large it, so I'm right up by the volleyball. I take one end of the calibration stick, moves it to the end of the volleyball, take the other end, move it to the other end. So now I've got the stick the same length as the volleyball. Now I'm going to tell the computer how long that is. It's 10 inches, which is 25.6 centimeters. I want it in meters. I can either change it right here or I can go up here and change it. I'm going to go up here. 25.6 centimeters is 0 0.256 meters. And I want it to be at 0 from the axis, so I'm going to go ahead and make that 0. And there I have it. Notice it tells it to you in scientific notation. This says 2.56 e to the negative 1 which is 2.56 times 10 to the minus first, which is the same as 0.256 meters, which is what my volleyball is. So now I've calibrated it, and I've put my axes in. Again, I'm going to make those two disappear. I'm going to zoom back to fit. The next thing I want to do is copy the data. Now, it turns out Tracker has a very sophisticated analysis program attached to it, but it's a little more complex to use, so we're just going to start out by copying the data over to graphical analysis. Do that. This is my data over here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use this little arrow to make it all appear. I'm going to click on to my first T, go over here and grab all of it, grab all the way down. I'm going to right click, copy selected data. To full precision. It's now been copied. I'm going to minimize my tracker program, go back to my program file, find graphical analysis, open that, put my cursor to the first table right there, the first cell in the first table, right click and paste. Now remember on the tracker file I had time I had the X position and I had the Y position. So here, when I copied over, it says this is mass B. It says my X column is time. It says the column that's considered to be Y is my X position. And the column that is just labeled column is my Y position. What I do with that data in graphical analysis is what we'll cover in another video. Thank you for your time.